All right, I'm back. I need to get ready to go in probably the next 20 minutes or so. So, decided to cut my break a little shorter. Let us begin. I have a question. Oh, dang. Freaking grunge. That grunge voice, man, throws me off. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, like, prep your voice a little bit. Like, <clears throat> and then speak. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. Um, so I was wondering about, like, working on projects after class is done. Uh -huh. Do you think working on a group of characters for a month is a good approach outside of class, or? Yeah, you should try to, like, do, like, um, I usually give people the advice of, like, you should probably do, like, um, a few characters every month, like, two to three characters, and then you should build a portfolio, and every time you would have, get to, like, the, uh, about 24 portfolio pieces, mm -hmm. that could be, like, 12 characters with one extra page for, like, the iterations and uh, thumbnails, like, all the stuff that you did to get to that character. Mm -hmm. So it adds up to be like a 24 page portfolio. Do something like this, you know, um, when you're starting out, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the goal here is so that you can, then when you get to that 24, the goal then is to replace those with any new artwork that you start to just throw in. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of times people don't really, like, they, they don't plan for, like, what they should try to do. And, uh, and again, I, I'm not immune to this, man. I'm, like, I'm only speaking from my own experiences. You know, I'm really bad at this stuff. Like, I'm, I really love to create things, but I don't tend to finish them um, as often as I would like. You know? Mm -hmm. I only started getting good at this in the last few years. Uh, before that, I was just kind of shooting from the hip a lot. And it may seem like that's not true. Like, like, well, I built like this whole legacy and this career around not doing stuff like this. Like, no, like before that, I, it was like I was talking about the left methods of like jumping right into it and learning it uh, on, the, on the go um, and how I used to be that kind of person. I'm not anymore because, like I said, it's not sustainable. You work longer hours than you want. Um, you get stressed out way more often, right? And I realize it's just, like, not effective because – and I, I proved this to myself by learning programming in a few years, right? Hmm. And I was just like, oh, yeah, totally. I just need to fucking slow down, you know? <laughs> and I, I've been reading books, and some of the books talk about this, about, like – it's actually better to do something like study something really like, you know, uh, attentively test yourself, you know, right after and then do it again. Very much what I've taught you guys. Right. Um, but then do it again, like, like a week later, like don't just study though. Like just test, just completely test what it is that you wanted to remember. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, like in this instance, let's say I wanted to get better at painting forms I will do a, a day's worth of studying and understanding and testing myself and then just take a whole break for like a whole week and then try it again at the end of the week to see how much information and that is even more valuable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why I'm saying that this is something that I've learned like through programming because uh, I, I had no choice to do it that way. And it started to, I started to learn programming faster than I started learning art. You know, granted art has a lot more complexities to it. I do think art is very hard and much harder, actually, than programming. Mm -hmm. um, like basic level art, like the kind of stuff that you would need to be able to do to get an art job is much harder to get to than a basic level programming job is what I'm yeah. getting at. Stack overflow, copy paste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, totally. Right? That's really like just copy other people like much smarter people's code. Nobody would <laughs> ever know. Right? Mm -hmm. But, but, uh, but painting, you can't bullshit that. You can't like steal other people's artwork, get a job, and then show up and then just keep stealing the artwork. <laughs> you know? Like they're gonna catch up. They're like, why do you keep on submitting 
like the same fucking image to us every time we ask you for changes, <laughs> you know, where you can like, yeah, go to Stack Overflow and just like say, hey, how would someone program this? And then people are like, this is how I would do it. And they're like, thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then just copy, go to GitHub, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, I'm just saying like, but, but, it, but like even like if you didn't do that, like if you programmed everything like earnestly, that's still easier than um, uh, entry level programming or uh, entry level art. That's what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like even with that being said, like I felt like programming, uh, learning it was rapid. Like I was learning it so fast, you know, and I was doing it in, in bite size, right? And uh, and then this one I started like learning about learning, right? Because I wanted to get better at it, and I wanted to get better at it not just for myself, but just for others. So I can teach people even better, and um, and then uh, I started learning. Well, yeah, it's totally a thing, you know. It's totally a thing that I I was not um, actively understanding. I was talking to a student this morning about this because you know they're like, well, how did you do it? Like, what were you thinking? You know, all this stuff. And I keep telling people, like, I didn't have anything in mind when I was trying to get good, you know? I was asking the same questions as you, you're asking, you know? Um, I'm just very resourceful, you know? And that's really hard to teach because being resourceful is a thing you do, right? And um, and I was trying to explain that. And I, and I still try to explain all this stuff. So, like, you know getting to kind of like the the point of what i'm trying to get at is is like all the stuff that uh people tend to to you know focus in on about like work and like how to expand your portfolio and all that stuff uh the reality is you should just always be working you should always be studying you should always be practicing you should always be adding to it uh even if maybe you, you take my advice very seriously and very literally, maybe you will learn, well, you know, it doesn't work for me this way. Maybe it's a, there's a different pattern that I prefer, you know, it doesn't matter as long as at the end you do something that brings you a quality portfolio. Make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is it good to do what I just su suggested or what you even just suggested of like once a, like once a month, try to pump out like a few characters. Yeah, maybe, but maybe you feel fast. Like you want to go faster. For whatever reason that works too as long as it, it's sustainable and you can do it yeah okay mm -hmm. so so yes that is fine um as long so as so much as long as you don't stop the reality is uh i talked about earlier when i was talking to kyle like i told him like that was one of the worst ways to kind of get better right but mm -hmm. i put in the context of that's the uh, one of the worst ways one of the worst ways is it uh does that mean you don't get better from it no i didn't say that right i said it's one of the worst ways to get better you know yeah but you will you will eventually get better right even with the worst approach and i gave examples of what that meant right the the one way that won't make you get better is the inaction way and I demonstrated that with the whole circle of improvement metaphor, right? Mm -hmm. That is what tends to not make people improve is the avoidance of like doing things that suck. And you were one of those people, but now you've, you've completely embraced this idea of like, it's okay, you know? And that it, it yeah. has paid you in dividends as I predicted, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so keep that in mind, just even with portfolio building, like you might, fucking hate every portfolio piece you put in your first portfolio yeah. <laughs> but you have a portfolio now you go take it to events you show it to people they tell you yeah this is the worst portfolio i've ever seen <laughs> let me tell you why mm -hmm. you know and then you can have that person tell you why and that's really powerful mm -hmm. versus having no portfolio to show them at all right yeah so there's a very clear difference there, isn't there? Like if you have something to show versus nothing to show, that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool beans. I have one. It's technical, and I don't know if yeah. you 
if you want to answer this as technical as ones as are you. easy. Okay. Uh, or easier. I, uh, how to approach multiple light sources. I, I don't, I, oh, yeah. I, I this, get this really is a, Oh, sorry. Finish your thought. I, 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 I just, I just, I was just saying that I, I, I know that there's the, the the thought process we're developing here as as an answer for that. But I, I just pointed out that I always get confused as to what should I put first. So I, it always looks weird. Yeah. So this is an easy one to answer, and th this isn't a a general question. A general question would be like, how do I get better at lighting? And that one I'll be like, okay, you got to do this. You know, you got to like the whole mentality behind that needs to change. You need to like, you need to change your questions. And this would be a right. question to change it to. Like, how do you deal with multiple light sources? That's a little more specific. Mm -hmm. um, the answer to this, it's really easy. You just start with one light at a time. Right? Okay. Yeah, you, you just start with one light at a time. Again, if you're not good at painting uh, uh, multiple light sources, um, it's, it's, as you said, you're probably just getting confused. Okay, yeah. one at a time. Now, you might not see me do something like this, but that's because I am uh, a little bit more advanced, right? Mm -hmm. but, but even I actually start with one light, at, light lighting situation at a time. In fact, most of my paintings even just have like one or two lights. Mm -hmm. And I find that one or two lights is actually way more dynamic than having like multiple lights. It just is, right. All right? So then it's just a matter of designing more interesting forms. That's what, that's what gives me the, the money shots that I usually get in my artwork. It's not so much the lighting anymore, it's about the forms that I've, I've created that are being lit, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. You know, oh, I mean, uh, you mean uh, you're you're thinking more about the the compositional side, or am I? I'm thinking of the actual forms in which they are being lit uh, that would, yes, potentially affect the overall illustrative appeal, right? But it's like the idea is this is that most of what I design could probably be lit in multiple different situations and, and still be all right. Uh -huh. Because if you're only designing for one character in one environment in one instance that will never be seen in any other instance, then you can kind of go nuts with the lighting, mm -hmm. right? And the illustration in general, because it's kind of going to live always in this circumstance, right? Mm -hmm. But in my, in my realm, I don't deal with that kind of stuff very often. I usually deal with, designing things that are going to be in multiple like multi-faceted lighting situations if you know what i mean so mm -hmm. being good at um lighting is not the skill that i wanted to get good at being good at forms because then no matter where that form is being lit it's going to look um, okay mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then, be, be, and then being good at making light on different surfaces yeah because uh lighting uh, from multiple angles um, on one design is not too challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but making a design that will almost universally have good lighting, no matter the, the environments, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's challenging. And a challenge that I love to take on. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, but if you wanted to focus specifically on lighting and being more organized with that, yeah, you should definitely do it one light source at a time. Absolutely. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. I would say start with the most, the, the primary light source mm -hmm. and then work your way down from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And yeah, and, and just a, one more note, actually. One more hmm. thing before I send you out into the wild. No, don't worry. Um, is that you would also want to consider, like, the bounce light as its own light source. So, like, let's say you're designing the primary light, and the primary light is bouncing off of stuff. It, mm -hmm. it, there, is a, there is an impulse to then, like, light that alongside the primary light. No, treat them as two separate lights. Hmm. 
even though the bounce light would be essentially part of the primary lights or whatever light source the bounce source the bounce light is supposed to be um a child of you know i see yeah uh, that, that's that's the thing i i, I think that the, the biggest issue i find when i when i'm trying to draw lights is that when i compose the light seems seems all together it works but as i develop the piece it goes uh, it goes all it goes a little wild yeah especially when there's uh, when you when you're trying to add those things yeah so i'm going to design like a little marshmallow man oh stay buffed yeah maybe something a little bit less and maybe more baymax looking so here's my thingy right Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and light this with just like the top light above, like considering only the light source that's coming straight from above. See kind of what's happening here. And then maybe the cash shadow from the head. Start thinking about that. Zoom out so I can see a more fuller picture of the lighting here. You know, mm -hmm. get that looking right. And then, um, let's put this on screen. Yeah. So then I can. What does screen do? It's basically what multiply does, mm -hmm. just inversed. Mm. So I can pick the value without pinning over my lights. I see. And now I'm doing the second light, which would be like the bounce. Mm. And then it'll probably be a little bit brighter there because the leg would be bounced back up into that. This will probably be a little brighter there. You know, mm -hmm. zoom out so we can get the bigger picture here. Chen now? Yeah. And then we can maybe do one more light. Put this on screen too, maybe. And then this will be maybe the rim lighting coming from the side. mentioned the, the the reflected light being its own light i had a teacher who, who used to say that it's it's about energy so you get like you always do percentage of what you were doing with the the basic light when you're doing bounce light yeah i mean the question was more about um how do you approach lighting mm -hmm. and about how to paint that lighting right right like to be appealing or realistic but my my strategy here is is focus on that now whether 
Now, the intensity of that lighting, how do you determine that? Well, I, I usually, uh, I don't really mind or I don't really care about that as much. All I care is about it's consistent so that the value of the, the bounce light is always at a very certain, it's very specific range. Oh, okay. The value of like the main light is always at a very specific range. Mm -hmm. These are the things that matter to me. All right. Cool. cool. Great. Thanks. Yeah, here, let me print screen this for you so you can take it to take it with you, take it to the bank. Oh, thanks. Yeah. But like I said, I, I typically just paint these days. Mm. But now that I've done that, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to make the lighting on this even more believable. Yeah, it seems like you, you when you when you you learn a lot of rules when you when you're studying. Are you talking about me specifically? No, no, every everybody. Okay. Uh, at least in my experience, like you 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 learn a, a bunch of rules, but if you if you try to just go for rules when you're painting, it's it's not a very clever approach. I mean, at least for me. It's more like you, you, you absorbing the thing. Like you, like you said, like if you, if you try to, if you try to do, when, when you mentioned the, um, uh, not necessarily only thinking on your own when you, when you visit the, the, the issue again, but when you do from imagination, the approach is very different than when you, when you do it looking at something. Yeah, so you got to be, uh, so when I say stuff like this, you have to also be very cautious um, what I mean. So when I say, you know, you, it's best to try to like start or rely on your, your imagination, usually what I mean by this is that typically people don't have anything there to pull from right so it's in the context of you're trying to draw something good but you can't do it because there's nothing good in your mind you mm -hmm. don't have any practice so learning rules and having strategies for these rules uh, actually isn't problematic the problem is that people don't make these rules subconscious mm -hmm. They are, they are like consciously in their mind. And when you have it consciously in your mind, it's harder to, it's harder to basically um, do it. Like, like a good example of this would be if you're playing soccer. If you had to, every time you kick the ball, you had to think about how you kick the ball. Yeah, you're not going to do as well uh, against somebody like Messi who doesn't think about kicking the ball. He just does it, right? Mm -hmm. but the reason why he could just do it is because he's built like a strong foundation of how to do that. And from all sorts of angles, do you see kind of the point of making here? Yeah. And so the problem though with art typically is that people treat art in this, uh, in this uh, cerebral sense, meaning that, they treat art and creativity as a mental ability. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the downfall. Like this idea of like, I don't have inspiration. I need to like have like, I need to go drink some coffee or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the, the point I'm making here is that when once you start to abandon this idea that art is some sort of mental um, thing, like being good at art, but more of a physical thing, because if you really stop to think about it, the only reason why we have a, a separate definition for physical and versus mental 
is just because of our own hubris to think that our mental consciousness is different from our physical body. But the reality mm-hmm. is our physical body literally is also our mental thinking, like our cognitive consciousness right. is a physical reaction. Uh, I mean, it's a chemical reaction, but that's physical. Right. right. Like if you put two chemicals together, they do a thing. Right. right? Uh, when you create memories, you are literally creating proteins. You know, mm-hmm. it's not some random ass thing. You know, we can measure how a memory is made. We can't reconstruct it well because it's so complex. But just because something is complex doesn't mean it's um, like not able to be replicated through like technology, for instance, right? Right. In fact, we're, we're starting to prove that we can make things that are probably even better than our brain. You know, yeah, yeah. But the point I'm making is like getting back to this art idea is like once you start to realize, and again, this is going back to the context of like, you know, drawing from imagination. What I'm really saying is like building that muscle memory, like building design elements and skill abilities, you know, and design, mm-hmm. just like you would like throwing a basketball. You know, mm-hmm. so like right now I'm talking to you and I'm painting this like weird ass thing. This is a good example of like muscle memory and in, in action. It's not mm-hmm. talent. It's my, I've painted this type of thing millions of times. I have this like built into my subconscious. Right. It's the same yeah. as walking. Like when I walk, I don't think about walking. I can walk and talk to somebody. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah, could you imagine it, every time, uh, sorry to interrupt. Let's make this right, right. Could you imagine that every time you talk to somebody, you had to also say, like, hold on. I need to like put one foot in front of the other. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Got to put the other foot in front of the other. You know, yeah, yeah. like, no, right? You just do it. What you're saying is, is very similar to the, to the idea of, of accents. When you, I, I, I like learning languages and um, I'm quite good at, at learning how to speak them rather than just learning the words. And most people, when they study, um, when they study languages, they, they, they get a hold of the rules, they get a hold of, of the, the words they have to, to memorize. But one of the uh-huh. things that um, it's really related to the, the action thing is not necessarily how much you know about that language, but how do you train how to say it. It's a muscle mass memory as well. If you want to know how to speak, like for instance, like a very difficult language like Japanese, you want to speak it very well. You have to re- rehearse the, the the phonetic and the the way that you that you speak things. And, and it's funny because there there are certain. Uh, I tried to to teach Portuguese to a, to a Japanese guy once, and there are some some sounds that they they just can't because they they don't have the muscle memory for that. So yes. I think it's very similar to what you're saying because the the, the biggest issue that I've been uh, facing. And that it's teaching me with this particular part of the class is, is basically working on my accent, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, there's a lot of truth to this, you know, the way we speak our language, like, like the, the complexities that go into reading, mm-hmm. our brain does a lot of shortcuts for us to be able to even read the way that we read, mm-hmm. you know? And it's mm-hmm. really fascinating. Uh, and there's like a really cool optical illusions that demonstrate how fascinating it is how we read. For instance, mm-hmm. we can finish reading a word that's not a complete word. Just yeah. enough characters in there that resembles it. So it's clearly a pattern recognition thing rather than actual like mm-hmm. reading a word, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but that, that's again going to my point, my ultimate point of like, you know, you got to recognize that the that when I tell you guys, you know, you're drawing from memory and to study, the studying is the practicing of, in in the context that you just brought up, of learning how to speak a language through just the accent, through the sounds intuitively, versus like like constantly thinking about how to roll your R's whenever you speak Spanish, right? Right. You should just be able to do it. Uh, And the only Mm -hmm. way to do it is to constantly speak say words that have R's rolled and have people constantly correct you. 
you know yeah eventually yeah. you'll just start doing it you'll just start see it. You'll, you'll see an r in the context that it needs to be in for you to roll it a very specific way you'll just start doing it mm -hmm. uh with art like you'll if you practice painting shapes and forms consecutively and constantly you will just start drawing shapes and forms um without even thinking about it you'll just yeah. do it you think more of intention than necessarily the words like you you yeah, yeah. it's about what you're trying to say right versus right um what you're like how you say it and that's exactly right and so for art it's the same thing it's not about how do i how do i paint it's like what am i painting yeah you know that's what yeah, i'm thinking I get it. About. i'm not thinking yeah. about how this is how i'm going to achieve this painting i'm thinking more about like what is it that I want to paint? Like, for instance, I chose these colors specifically because I think I haven't used these colors in a while. And um, that's it. That's the only thing that's going to my mind now. Whether mm -hmm. this creature is a creature that I use, I don't know. I'm thinking about the design of a project that I'm working on, and I'm trying to think, how can I create this creature to fit in this universe? And what's the purpose? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, like, is this a good strategy? Should I just go straight to ZBrush because of the practicality of that? Right, like I can design mm -hmm. it in ZBrush, and then go straight into um, uh, putting it into the game. You know, those like mm -hmm. these are the things that are literally going through my mind aside from answering your guys' questions. Right. Anyway, I'm gonna end the class here, though. Good class, cool. awesome. Good work. Keep up the good pace. Y'all are killing it. I'm very proud of the progress thus far. Let's keep going. All right, so I'll talk to you guys on Friday. Peace out, friends, and talk soon. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.